Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another layer by layer tutorial. So today I wanted to show you guys how I put together this D20 icosahedron frame type thing. So uh, a couple weeks ago on Instagram, I shared this photo here of a icosahedron as a frame. And this looks pretty cool. I printed this in stainless steel composite PLA filament from the guys from Protoposit. It came out really, really nice. And then later in that week, I put together, um, or I shared it rather, on 3D Hangout. So I talk about how I did some sanding and some polishing techniques to make this really, really nice icosahedron printed with no support material. It looks really, really awesome. So if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check out uh, last week's um, 3D Hangout with me and Pedro. We also did a dual extrusion version. But in this tutorial, uh, I just want to show you guys how to make the frame. So if you look, um, do, 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 do. I actually show you guys later in the video how I put together D20 uh, using 3D sketches, like connecting dots the, and reference points. So check that out. Check out that whole episode to find out how to create the D20 because I'm going to start off with the D20 already created. So let's say we already have our D20 created. Uh, we basically created it uh, using some lofts and doing some 3D sketches. So you can see here I have all my 3D sketches still. So to create the frame, I actually had to project uh, sketches from surfaces from all of these 20 uh, triangles because I did try to reuse this sketch, the 3D sketch, the original sketch that created the D20. Uh, I wanted to kind of create some, uh, some offsets, but it wouldn't let me do that. So I had to basically uh, create new sketches on every single side. So let me show you how to do that. So under sketch, there's this thing called project. So that allows us to project any, uh, a, project a sketch from a given surface. So any one of these surfaces will do. So I'll start with this one here. So it creates a, a, a try, uh, it makes a sketch, right? So it just kind of copies that uh, surface, makes a sketch out of it. And then from there, all I did was I did an offset. So now I can offset what we just created and I actually made it go negative. So I actually put negative 1.5, uh, you can change it here, negative 1.5 millimeters. Ah, there you go. So that's going on the inside. So now we have these sort of two triangles on this one face. So once I have that, I then proceeded to extrude this so I can extrude this out. And this is how thick we want our uh, sort of frame to be. So I made it uh, 1.5 millimeters to kind of go with the 1.5 offset. And then I had to make sure to create a new body or a component, probably a component would be better. So I'll create a new component with the operation type and then hit okay. So that creates a new component here. And now I have our singular uh, sort of frame, but you notice that the frame is actually not going inside, it's going on the outside of the frame, which makes it important if you want to make this frame uh, outside of the, the actual D20, like maybe you want to make a shell like I did in the project. Um, so then you have to basically do this uh, for all 20 sides, right? So let's do another one. So let's do this one here, the one that's sort of adjacent to it. Click on that. I'll hit uh, project, or it's already projected, so I'll hit O on my keyboard for offset. Oh, it's just, it's just hit OK, hit O. And then we'll put negative 1.5, hit OK. Then I'll hit E on my keyboard, which will exit the sketch and go directly to the extrusion. And then I can add my value, which is 1.5. And then I want to say join. I want to use the join operation, uh, but I don't want to join it to the D20 itself. So I'm going to hide the D20, and it'll change it back to, it'll change my operation, so I've got to change it back to join. And then I'll hit OK. So now we have these two triangles that are joined together, but they're joined together uh, very, very slightly. So there's like this seam here, and we'll get rid of this seam once we create the entire thing. So we will proceed to do that same processes, the same, uh, yeah, <laughs> the same um, steps for all 20 sides. Okay, so at this point, I've actually created half of the D20, and I don't want to proceed. I can just duplicate this and um, rotate it and create a full uh, D20. So you know it's half of it when it looks like this sort of zigzag shape like that. So we can, we can do the duplication by going to our body, right click on it, hit 
copy and then right click on the body again and hit paste and that will create our um, our body but we need to move our pivot because if we pivot it now it's all over the place so put back to zero so I'm gonna hit uh, set pivot and I will select the center point of our origin if your origins aren't up there just turn it on and now I can click on that center hit uh, done and now I can rotate the handle by this way here like that make sure I have a nice orientation of it and uh, looks like it's just one triangle that's very very wrong <laughs> let's go ahead and d delete that it looks like we have uh, one body that wasn't combined so let's do a combine this body with body 4 hit OK now it's our full body okay good good now we can duplicate it by hitting copy right click paste and it brings it up there to the bodies, but we can move it later. So again, I'll move the uh, pivot. I'll set it to the center, accept it, and now we can rotate it. There we go, 180 degrees, hit OK. Now I'll merge them again. Merge this body with that body, hit OK, and hopefully, yep, it brings it to this component. So we're in a separate component, cool. So now we have our frame of our D20, but we're not done yet. We actually have a bunch of these uh, split seams here, and we wouldn't want to print this because um, it's not really attached. It's it's attached by like very very s barely attached. So what we can do is we can we can all we can do here is we can just select these two faces here like this, and I'm gonna hit the delete key, and Fusion will kind of merge heal those surfaces together. So we can do that to all of the edges that need to be healed. So we can just do that. Do it over here. Run this one. And it's a little bit time consuming, but once you do them all, you will have a really nice uh, fully closed uh, manifold uh, D20 shape. All right, so once we have deleted all of the uh, the faces and eff effectively uh, healed them and merged them all together, we have this really nice D20. There's some really sharp edges here, but you can, of course, um, add some fillets to round them out, kind of like I did over here. I added some fillets over here and sort of to this whole thing. And that came out really nice. But if you wanted to print this as is, you're totally free to print it. So let's go ahead and bring it into our slicer and just show you a little bit of setting, setting it up. So I'll hit say, right click on the body, save as, and I'll just throw it straight into uh, our slicer, Simplify 3D. So here it is. And if you try to print this as is, it definitely won't print because we are just barely on one of those sharp edges. So what we can do is we can go up to uh, edit and then say place surface on bed. And that allows us to select any surface and then we can place that on the bed. So let's say this triangle here like that and now it is flush and flat on the bed so we have a really nice uh, base one of the things I recommend doing though is going to additions and adding a skirt so here I have like a ridiculous skirt it doesn't have to be that big maybe six more than five uh, one layer is just fine make sure that the offset is zero millimeters so that is directly on it so it'll have a lot better adhesion if you have a heated bed if you don't have a heated bed it's all good I printed mine on my printer bot play which is pretty small but it fitted just fine this is a Delta printer uh, from CME and C, uh, CME, C, CME CNC, <laughs> hard name, uh, the Orion bot, but uh, this will work on any printer, I think. And if you look at it here, it just uh, makes that nice flat brim, so it has a lot of uh, adhesion to the bed, and it just kind of grows, catches itself, but you'll notice that there's a bit of overhang. So once it gets to, once it gets to this point, it has to bridge itself. Uh, if you have an active cooling fan on your printer, you should be okay because it's just kind of, it has islands to connect to. So it is able to uh, catch itself and the printer uh, did catch itself, uh, at least my print, and there's just a little bit of a, of a overhang issue, but uh, it cleans up really nice after you sand it down and, and clean it up with an exacto knife and it comes up really nice. So that's about it. Um, again, you can use this uh, to create kind of like a frame around your D20 shell. Um, I added an LED to it, all sorts of different things. So, 
So there you have it. If you guys have any questions or you have any other uh, methods on how to create the D20, let me know in the comments below. It'll help me out and other people too. Uh, so there you have it, guys. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.